What is going on everybody and welcome to part 13 of our Python for Finance tutorial series as well as kind of the introduction to Quantopian. So the purpose of Quantopian is uh, many fold. So initially Quantopian in my eyes was really just a back testing platform which at the time was still super valuable because first of all they provide you um, stock pricing data down to the minute for any company, but then also they were providing fundamental data on companies, again, for free, um, and also the pricing data was for free. And so you were able to actually leverage data and do back testing on, first of all, just data that was normal, uh, otherwise paid data. Also, the back tests themselves were immensely useful because they visualized trading as it happened for you. They tracked other statistics like uh, alpha and beta and sharp ratio and all these kinds of things. Also, it shows your transactions over time really simply. And anybody who's ever tried to code something that just does that um, knows how challenging that really is and how time consuming. I mean, I mean honestly, to, to just do the back testing is, is like thousands and thousands of hours, in my opinion. So, um, so yeah, so there was that. Now, Quantopian's changed a lot over time and I would call Quantopian now more of a, of a like a research platform that you just so happen to be able to also back test on. <laughs> so so it's kind of changed. Now the other thing you can do with Quantopian, so first of all, some people have expressed concern that if you write a really good strategy on Quantopian that Quantopian will steal it. Uh, so first of all, they just wouldn't probably do that. But also Quantopian is actually interested in working with anybody who comes up with a good strategy. So you can get capital allocations from Quantopian. The target is to pay you out 10%. I don't know if that's negotiable at all, but 10% um, is a pretty good starting point. It's a very low barrier to entry anyways. Um, and what they want from you is a beta between you know, negative 0.3 and positive 0.3, but if you could be like zero beta, that's like, that's that's good for them. Um, they're not so interested, like you don't have to beat the S&P 500, you need like low volatility, you need a very, uh, I guess the best word maybe is diversified. They used to require that you long and short companies, but that's not a requirement anymore, it appears, but you pr it probably is kind of, just because you want to be able to have a, a, a neutral beta. So, Anyway, you, you can get capital allocations from Quantopia. Now, they are going to um, somewhat, like if you try to get a capital allocation, not like they're just like handing out money. So, so if you try to get a capital allocation, actually like a professional analyst is going to look at your strategy and your performance and the, um, the underlying kind of statistics of your strategy. And what's interesting is um, it would appear to me that probably the exact same tools that that strategist is using to, or analyst rather, is looking to analyze your strategy uh, are available to you as well. So the bigger things that I just have kind of caught my eye since I kind of just started looking back into Quantopian is Alpha Lens and Pifolio, probably especially Alpha Lens, uh, which gives you access to things that again, would take you probably like thousands of hours. <laughs> okay, so so the, the, the tools that are being thrown at you here are tools that you would probably get if you were like an actual quant at, you know, some big investment bank. So you have like tons of tools at your disposal here. So, um, and, and trust me, the whole point of Quantopian is they're, they're trying to find people who can make good strategies and work for them because not only are they looking to give you capital, they also have other people that want to give them capital because they want to invest in that business model. So anyway, that's that. Uh, the last thing I'll kind of say on capital is just because maybe they decline to give you capital doesn't mean your strategy sucks. It just means like possibly, almost certainly, especially because Quantopian has been around for a while, there there's a high chance that you your strategy is very similar to someone else's strategy that already exists. So if that's the case, they're not going to just do another one that's basically the same. Anyway, moving along from there, um, when you get it, uh, basically go to Quantopian, make an account. Um, I will just point out the community real quick. So go to community and forums. Um, when you come here, you can immediately see um, lot, like you know these posts. But then over here, you'll see these red things. The little squiggly lines are back tests. The, this little thing is a notebook. So the back test, like for example, if I just open this one up real quick. Um, there's some information on this. Doesn't look like this is actually doing anything. I'm not really sure what it does here. This one does something. So, so you can, you know, you can look at it's embedded. So you can check the risk metrics and stuff, and you can see the source code that generated this. 
Um, but you can also literally click clone algorithm and it will take it and, and let you, it'll add it to your algorithms and you can play with it. So, um, so yeah, there's that. Now, anyway, that's the community. So you can learn a lot of good things from the community. So definitely check that out. Also, um, we'll probably come here from time to time, but their actual documentation for Quantopian is really useful. So there's no way I could possibly cover everything you can do with Quantopian, especially because Quantopian has a lot of what I would describe as like helper functions that will just make your life easier for doing specifically trading strategy type stuff. So to learn more about what's available to you, I would just from time to time come over here and just read, like you don't have to read word for word, but just I would scroll down the sidebar and look at words that appear interesting to you. So, um, and in fact, I was kind of interested on logging a second ago. Um, Cause I was interested to know if you could change it like you can on Python normally with like the logging. I don't see it. Anyway, I'm not gonna waste too much time on that. Um, anyway, their docs are great. So definitely check those out too. And then we'll probably visit them when I have some questions on things. So the next thing is basically where you're probably gonna spend most of your time here is gonna be under my code. Notebooks is as you mature, um, that's probably where you're gonna spend most of your time. That's more of like the research environment part of Quantopian. And then algorithms is where you'll run back tests. But you can also sort of back test code in notebooks. So I'm gonna click on algorithms for now, just so I can show a really quick example of working with Quantopian. But pretty quickly, we're gonna actually transition to working more so in the notebooks section. And I'll explain why, um, because we're gonna start with algorithms first and show some of the pitfalls of starting here. So anyways, uh, we'll click on algorithms. And when you come here, chances are you might have some starting ones if you just created your account. Maybe you've got some already because you've already had an account. But if you don't have anything here, uh, you can click clone sample algorithm and you end up with three. Fascinating. I'd say that's a typo. Uh, anyway, so you can look at these. I think they're maybe a little much for someone who's just getting started. Um, so yeah, you can kind of look through them if you'd like. Uh, but we're going to write our own because I think starting with like a totally clean slate is the easiest way to understand what each thing is doing. So I'm going to actually delete these and hit new algorithm. And I'm going to call this, I don't know, Pinance 13 Quantopian intro. Nice long title. And I'm going to just highlight and delete everything. I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit at least. And we're going to get started. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create this initialize function. So define initialize. And this just runs once when the script uh, starts up. It takes one parameter, which is context. Context is a Python dictionary that stores a bunch of information on your strategy. If you are new to Python, this is going to be hard on you. And if you're not new to Python, this will be just something you have to understand. But the Quantopian kind of uh, environment here is going to do some things behind the scenes. So context was never defined. Nothing was imported. We're never going to call initialize. We're never going to call the next function we write. It's just going to happen. And actually these were at least in zipline, which is what Quantopian to my knowledge is. I'm pretty sure it's still built on top of zipline, um, was built on top of, and these were actually methods in a much larger class, and you would, but you'd still have to run it. But anyways, some magic is happening here, and you don't have to call these functions. So anyway, if you're new to Python, and you start here, and then you go somewhere else, that's going to be really hard. But anyway, um, just understand that's happening. Anyway, context is a Python dictionary, and it contains information on your um, your portfolio. Basically, it's, it's about you. So your portfolio, the performance, just things like your, your leverage, your account, stuff like that, that's contained in context. Now we're gonna add something new to context and we're gonna say context.aapl. So it's a dictionary. We're defining a new element basically in this dictionary. And we're gonna say context.apple is equal to SID. And now we're gonna search for aapl. And there's apple, we click it and suddenly it becomes 24. Seems kind of arbitrary. Uh, it's not. <laughs> so SID, actually it kind of is. But anyway, SID, uh, to my knowledge, is, it's a jet flying over, sorry if you hear that. SID is stock ID, I'm pretty sure. I'm kind of making that up on the fly. I'm pretty, I'm gonna guess it's stock ID. And 
what it does is basically over time, like Apple has been around uh, for the duration of, I think pricing goes from like 2001 to current. And I'm pretty sure Apple's been that ticker since 2001. I think Apple was like 1999 or something. So anyway, Apple has has held the, the AAPL ticker that whole time, but other companies have not. Other companies have had tickers, maybe they went out of business and then another business came in and actually was able to acquire that ticker. So tickers change over time, but the actual company name doesn't. So you can search with SID and this is your way of ensuring that you're actually investing in the right company. So you could have also said like Apple here, maybe, yeah, and still found Apple Inc. Okay, so we've got that. Now what we're gonna do is, that's basically the end of our initialize function for now. I mean, normally you'd have other things in here. You might schedule some functions or something like that. But for now, we're just defining um, this single, you know, what is Apple. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna define a handle data function. And it's gonna take context and it's gonna take data. Now data is your universe of information. So this is like your world, it's your environment, okay? It's your universe. So this is gonna contain things like stock prices. Now, um, to access it, super simple, we're gonna say hist for history equals data dot, and you've got a bunch of information here, but we're looking for history. Um, and then already pops up to you, it says, okay, you've got asset, fields, bar count, and frequency. Well, the asset that we're interested in is context.aapl. The, um, Fields, fields is like what kind of data, like price, volume, stuff like that. We are interested in price. Bar count, how many fields of these things are we interested in? We're gonna say 50. And frequency is going to be one D for one day. You can also do one M for one minute, but we want day. And then we'll close this off. And there's our history. So, <clears throat> so we've got 50 periods of one day data, history, prices for Apple. Okay, so cool. Now that we've got that, we're gonna generate some simple moving averages. If you do not, if you're not familiar with simple moving averages and like a simple moving average crossover strategy, first of all, we're not gonna make any money with this, but it's gonna be a good example. So this is a stock of some kind. I'm, I'm not sure whose stock price this is. But anyways, there's a 20 MA and a 50 MA. So the 20 MA is the red line, the 50 MA is the gold line or yellow or whatever. Um, and basically the, the whole point of a simple moving average crossover strategy is to detect when a price might be trending and invest in the trend. So for example, wouldn't it be nice if you bought right here and you sold here or bought right here, I guess you would have sold here, but that's okay. Bought right here and then sold up here, right? Wouldn't that be ideal? Or started to short here and bought back here. Wouldn't that be great, <laughs> right? So that's kind of the whole point of simple moving average crossover strategy. Let's see if it actually works though. So once we've got that, um, we need to basically from history generate the, basically the simple moving averages. So we're gonna say SMA underscore 50, and that's gonna be equal to hist.mean. So I guess it might be unclear what hist is. So let's go ahead and do a log.info hist.head. So History is a pandas data frame. And basically everything, when you get data, um, at least a lot of things, <laughs> are gonna be pandas data frame. So if you know how to work with pandas, you'll know how to work uh, with this data. If you don't know how to work with pandas, don't worry, there's a tutorial for that. Python programming net, data analysis, data analysis of pandas, and you can learn all about lovely pandas. So anyway, pandas, uh, now, We've got SMA50, that's hist.mean. Now we can do the SMA20. That can be hist the last 20 days of the history dot mean. Perfect. So now with this information, we've got the simple moving averages defined. Um, now we're ready to actually place orders with that. And I think I'm actually gonna stop it here and in the next tutorial, we'll actually place orders and kind of see, see where we're at at that point. Um, so we're gonna learn we're gonna learn some good good lessons in the next one. So uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, if anything appears magical or black boxy or whatever, uh, let me know. Also, I guess what I could do is let me zoom out and I can just build this algorithm. And also, I guess while we're building it, I'll explain how, what all this stuff is too. Um, I thought I could pull this up. Let's do this. Okay. So when you're in this screen, you can hit build algorithm, and it's kind of like a it'll just run it real quickly to the side here. Um, 
and let's go to logs. Hopefully we'll start getting them. Okay, so then you can cancel here if you want. I'm gonna say cancel. And sure enough, you can see this is the um, log.info hist.head. So as you can see, it is indeed in chronological order. So the, the last 20 would be the latest 20 days of prices. That's the only column here. And it's the average, super simple. Um, so anyways, there's that. Now and you can pick the days or the dates basically that you wanna test against. This is how much money you're playing with. Um, and then finally, you can hit run full back test, but we're not trading right now, so I'm not going to click that. But normally you can click that, but you'll see that in the next tutorial. So anyways, yeah, questions, comments, concerns below. If anything's not making sense to you at this point, uh, let me know. I'll do my best to help you out. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.